The other day, I was filling up gas at the gas station, and I entered my phone number in because I get points. And I figured, why not? I'm a part of this grocery store rewards program, and I might as well get points. The thing is, is from that entering of the phone number, I ended up getting maybe 30 cents in value. Was it worth the time of me putting in my phone number and getting the points? In the grand scheme of things, not really. And here's why. If I enter the phone number in and there's an issue, then I have to go in to the gas station and get them to re-enter all the information. So if there's any kind of error whatsoever, I have to like go in and pay at the counter. So this rewards program thing has to work flawlessly and it doesn't always do that. So then there's more time wasted when I go in. And is it worth the 30 cents? All that trouble in the grand scheme of things? No, not really. Here's another reason why the points are, I mean, they're addicting, right? They're so addicting because you, you see you see these points racking up. I know it might only be 30 cents here, 30 cents there in terms of value, but you like collecting points because, well, it's not 34 cents that you see. It's 340 points. Psychologically, you're thinking, oh, wow, that's a lot of points. That's worth a lot but really, it's not. And all of these points programs, they all focus on your, the rewards and what you sort of get. And they make it sound so much more valuable than it really is. And it really is addicting. The thing is, it makes you want to buy things that you don't need. Okay, gas is obviously something you might need, but do you really need more groceries just to get those points, were you going to buy that thing if you didn't get bonus points for it? So what happens with these programs is it makes you buy things that you maybe don't need. Credit card companies are perfect. They're absolutely perfect when it comes to executing these rewards programs. If anyone wants to do a rewards program, they need to look at what credit card companies do. Because those companies, they have figured it out to a T. I have a Visa card, and I believe that their points programs are some of the best. Now, they might not give you much in terms of real value, and there's probably better points programs out there. But they just seem to seamlessly give you what you want. And they have a rewards catalog, and it's quite comprehensive. So you have lots to choose from in terms of what you can cash your points in on. Except it's taken me about 10 years to get the points that I have. And I spent probably $30,000 just to make $200 in rewards. Not the best rewards program, but clearly Visa's done something right. Well, they've given you a free card, no annual fees, interest rates are not that good, but if you're like me and you pay off your card, then you don't have to worry. But all these people will have these cards and they'll go into significant debt because points, rewards points such a big thing. So people end up buying things that they don't necessarily need. Well, I'll put it on my credit card and then they'll forget about the charge. This happens all the time. This is how credit card companies make money is people forgetting to pay their credit card back and on time. Yeah, a lot of people aren't doing that. So this card racks up debt because, well, People get rewards for using their credit card. At least with a debit card, you're using cash that you actually have. Credit card, not so much. You don't really have that cash. 
but you get reward points and even though at the end of the day you can't really use the points for very much or you can't use the rewards for very much or you have to spend a lot of money to get those rewards people still do this and it is a serious addiction Because honestly, shopping already is an addiction, okay? How many people are obsessed with shopping? They go and they buy things they don't really need. Consumerism at its finest. Well, a credit card facilitates purchasing behavior. It's even easier today because all you have to do is tap your card and you're set. You are ready to go. Now, technology companies have caught on to all of this. Apple has released a credit card. They're doing something, right? obviously, and there's probably going to be a points program or rewards program attached to it so that more people use their Apple card on purchases. So shopping is one of those things. It's addicting. It can consume us. It can take over our lives. And we don't really have a solution to all of this. This is all very new to us. Yeah, we're still trying to figure out how to manage debt. Because, I mean, a hundred years ago, we weren't really playing around with credit cards, per se. So, credit cards are really facilitating our spending habits. And this is great for companies, obviously, because they want people to spend more money, they want to have people coming into their stores, and credit cards make it completely seamless. I mean, before you had to enter your PIN number in, now it's a tap and you're ready to go. It's just so easy. So more and more debt is being racked up because of this huge addiction. And is there really any way around it? I mean, you go into a store and you have a set list of things that you intend on buying and for whatever reason, it all falls by the wayside. The minute you enter that store, marketing takes control. Marketing suggests you buy this because you get X number of points, you buy that because you get a few more extra points there. And then it's just, it's a, it's an avalanche. It just, it just keeps tumbling down on you, all of these different rewards. And it's a very sensory type of experience when you go into these stores. So companies have really caught hold on all of this and they've, they've really optimized it. And I haven't even begun to talk about apps. Okay, we're just talking about rewards programs which convince you to buy things that you don't need. Ooh, I get X number of points for that. How about the apps that these companies are releasing that they've developed to the point where they are flawless and they give you recommendations day by day of what you should be buying. I mean, you look on these things and you say, oh, I have to go to the grocery store today because I get points on this. It's a trigger. It makes you have to go back to the grocery store every single week because it can determine your preferences. So if you buy spinach every week, it will, it will convince you to keep coming back to get spinach, even when spinach isn't even available in the store. So you go there and you're frustrated because spinach is out, but you figure, well, I'm already here. I better just get stuff. So the points programs will trigger behaviors that you would have otherwise have not actually done. I mean, if you turn all of this off, will you go to the grocery store as often? No, you won't. You probably have a routine and you'll stick to that. So these programs with their apps. I mean, people download it on their smartphones. You can have your card on your phone, so you just scan your phone. You can see what kind of deals of the week there are, and you go and you get them. It's really that simple. And, I mean, it's kind of tragic because it puts people in more debt. And companies aren't limiting this. They're not going to do that. It's not like screen time uh, where app, like smartphone companies are trying to limit screen time now all of a sudden. Well, credit card companies and grocery stores, why would they limit deal time? 
No, they wouldn't do that because then they would lose money. So that wouldn't make sense to them. Whereas smartphone companies, well, they already got you buying their smartphone. So of course they can release screen time. I mean, why not? Yeah, I mean, you've already bought their phone, so makes sense, right? Makes sense. And, well, it doesn't hurt them at all. It just makes them more desirable, I guess, as a company, because they care about you slightly. But these deals that just keep popping up, I mean, okay, grocery stores, that's one thing. What about fast food companies? Yeah, they all have apps coffee companies, Starbucks, Tim Hortons, any kind of coffee company that's major, they're releasing apps to convince you to keep coming back for more coffee, more stuff. Like buy seven, get the eighth free. That's a common one. Latches you on, you know? Ooh, I gotta go back. Back, 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 back. These programs are so well done. And as a marketer, somebody who appreciates marketing, I have to say it's fantastic deception and it's fantastic retention. Okay, This is all about retention of these companies. If you can get somebody who's a loyal coffee drinker come back to your company, you give them special rewards, you will have them for life. You just keep giving them this this program. And I think anyone, any company that's coming out today, small business, they need to look at these retention programs. It doesn't matter who you are. Maybe you're a coach, right? And all you do is you do like an hourly coaching. You need to start thinking about how you can package, package a program so you keep people coming back for more because that's how you keep people. Otherwise, you lose them. And e-commerce is another area. So if you buy something on your e-commerce site, well, you get rewarded if you keep coming back. Recommendations come up, suggestions of what you should be buying next. Ooh, what you should read next. Check this out. It's to convince you to keep buying. This is all very fascinating stuff. And it's fascinating to see consumer psychology, consumer behavior based on all these programs. Is it ethical? Is it ethical? I have no idea if this is ethical. Because you could argue it's helpful. You can argue that people don't know really what they want, but companies are giving them suggestions and it's up to the consumer to say no the thing is is humans don't have as much of a discipline as you might think like it's not a hundred percent if we see something that's a deal we latch onto it deals grab us okay they really do free shipping okay that grabs us um save X amount or use this coupon. Like we latch on to these things. We like rewards. We like feeling better about our purchasing decisions. So when we see rewards, well, we latch on. Because then it helps us feel better about our decisions. So I mean marketers are maybe just making us feel more comfortable in terms of what we're buying. Because if we have to go and get groceries anyways, well, why not be suggested things? But if you suggested things that you never buy, then it's annoying to you and you end up buying things you would have never purchased before. And that's where companies are kind of urging you on to buy more and more and more, and they'll do that. And it's very, very effective. It's very effective. And look, I have, I have no real complaints about this because at the end of the day, it's your decision as a consumer to say yes or no. And you have to have the discipline to be able to say no to programs. For me, I'm debating. I'm debating whether I should just cancel all the programs because I might find more benefit and more reward when I buy things. 
if I don't have deals being thrown into my face. Because when the deals come up, I get overly excited about things that I honestly do not need. And uh, yeah, this happens. This happens all the time. Special holidays, they have deals that come up, captures captures the attention of people. And do we need it all? No, we don't really need it all. Is it helpful? It can be helpful if you have a very clear purchasing behavior mapped out for yourself. Then it can be helpful because it can help you save money. At the end of the day, though, how much time are you spending analyzing deals? And is that time the best use of time? Well, if you're trying to really take over the world or get some sort of world domination, actually, deals are not the best thing for you. Deals are slowing you down. Deals are keeping you away from what you should really be focusing on. Deals are holding you back from the things that you need to be spending your time on. Because you might save a few dollars here and a few dollars there, but at the end of the day, honestly, the amount of time you spend on analyzing the deals, rewards programs, are most likely not worth it. But it's nice. It's all very nice. As someone who's in marketing, I sort of look at it and I think, "Eh, I should probably get out of that program. And there are programs that I've been with for years and years and years, and I can't really compute the value. Because after a couple months, I will have spent more money at that location than I would have ever before. And it's all because of this rewards program that's incentivized me to go there. So that's only the the trap that I see. And it happens to people all over. So what's the suggestion? Have some censorship on what you're doing. Have some control on where you're spending your money. Analyze your credit card statements each month. Is that the best use of your time and money spent? Figure that all out for yourself and make decisions on cutting back on programs if you feel that you're not getting the benefit from them. You know, if a rewards program is just wasting your money, then killing it is actually not a bad idea. You might lose the points in terms of what you could be making in terms of points, but I bet you you'll be saving a lot more money. Yeah, yeah, probably would. And as a marketer, I can tell you that you you would. You would be saving money. If you, you, if you went about your life with zero rewards programs, you would be much more conscious of where you're spending your money. But of course, there aren't too many people talking about this. And I wonder why. Well, because companies don't want us to be talking about this. So, hmm. Yeah, that's that's really all I can say about all of this. There's probably a few other examples that I'm missing here. But uh, you know what? Let's wrap it up. I think that's good enough for today. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Toodles.